Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come with. Okay, so there's more stuff on um, Alan Weiselberg. And uh, so it's, it's worth a couple of questions. I'm going to give you a quick update on where we're at with him. I've stolen all the reporting from a, uh, a MSNBC uh, opinion uh, columnist, and, uh, but I've condensed it down to just a tiny little bit, and then we'll get into the draw. Okay, so here's a scoop. Um, there's new stuff out on uh, this uh, Weiselberg situation. So I thought I'd just bring you up to date on what they're talking about, which I'm sure everybody's already heard, but you know, I'll, I'll repeat it here, throw in a couple of pictures, and then we'll get right into the uh, divination. And I uh, can't wait to see what that tells us. So, Alan Weiselberg resigns, but is he still running things behind the scenes through the kids? Hmm. So, uh, MSNBC opinion columnist Katie S. Uh, Fang reported as follows, and I've almost completely plagiarized this information uh, that follows from her. Uh, Alan Weiselberg faces 15 felony criminal counts, including grand larceny, falsifying business records, and tax fraud. Okay, we all know that. Then now the Manhattan District Attorney's Office says he evaded paying more than $900,000 in taxes, and he plus other senior executives were the beneficiaries of perks and benefits with the very real dollar values never being accounted for in tax filings. So. Although Trump Organization had begun removing Weiselberg from his leadership positions at several subsidiaries, uh, the Washington Post reported that he actually, Weiselberg, actually resigned from those roles on June 25th in a written uh, resignation letter. And so that was before he was even uh, indicted. Now, Weiselberg's resignation stated that effective immediately, June 25th, he resigned from each and every office and position held for entities on tax form Schedule A had to be a ton. He may continue to play some role at Trump Org, but what? So he resigned from those organizations, but not necessarily from Trump Org. It looks like Trump and his kids are taking on more responsibilities, which means trouble for everyone, but is act Alan actually running things, kind of consulting with Don and the kids? If so, it looks like this is also grounds for some type of fraud somehow. And uh, might uh, Weiselberg still uh, cooperate with the prosecution? He may have to. Uh, the Manhattan District Attorney's Office already has relevant and necessary documents, plus witnesses like Jennifer Weiselberg, his former daughter-in-law, who continues to provide understanding regarding what those documents uh, were and their significance and what that is. And then, of course, it, they believe Controller Jeff McConney, of course, who's also uh, spoken in front of a grand jury. Now, in a sworn deposition by Weiselberg's son, Barry, for his divorce, Barry says his dad and Trump had determined Barry's $200,000 annual salary, plus related perks, including massive annual bonuses. Now, when asked if Trump was personally paying some of his expenses, he said, I don't know. And uh, Barry's wife, Jennifer, gave law enforcement boxes and boxes of documents and uh, met with investigators several times, very happily. I guess the old adage, like uh, Katie Fang says in her article, is true. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. And so, with two sets of books, checks signed by Trump, um, is the Trump Organization like the Titanic with its end already written? Uh, so, Katie S. Fang is a trial lawyer and a legal contributor for, M for NBC News and MSNBC, based in Miami, and here's her picture. Thanks, Katie. So Le Grand Circus and Sideshow Tarot by Joe Lee. These are really terrific cards. They come in a very nice box. If you received them as a gift or gave them as a gift, you'd feel like, oh, that's a, that was a nice gift. And um, the cards themselves are really nice. Um, they're done in the style of sort of circus posters. And uh, the guidebook uh, is really a very nice little guidebook. This fellow Joe Lee uh, was a very interesting uh, person, or is a very inter interesting person, and uh, I want to find, there's a little bit here that talks about him, um, but he was a circus performer, he went to the Clown College in Florida, which I'm from Florida, and I'm very well with the Clown College here, 
uh, uh, that uh, you can go to to get a degree in that. And then uh, he's done other things in his life. And then once he decided uh, that he would create uh, tarot cards, he uh, designed these um, to be so very useful. They're easy to use. Um, the art on them is amazing. If you know your right away system, you're not going to have a problem, you know, deciphering uh, what these cards are, are going to mean. I mean, they're pretty self-explanatory and fun, fun, fun to look at. So, you know, I do this so that you can have a look at these cards. Uh, and, you know, if you're not a person who collects cards or looks at a bunch of tarot cards, otherwise you're only going to see the few cards that a reader pulls at a time. And uh, I think it's just that you're missing out on a lot. So, you know, this uh, Le Grand uh, Circus Sideshow Tarot, I love using these. So the perfect cards for this have to be this Circus Tarot. I mean, what else could you use for this whole uh, sideshow? All right, and it's one sideshow after another. I mean, if it's if it, there's always another tent to go to to see what kind of uh, mysteries are going to be revealed or what sort of uh, wool they're going to try to pull over our eyes. But uh, the question is going to be, I think there's going to be three. So is Weiselberg running things kind of behind the scenes, you know, on, um, well, how could he be doing it? He's talking to the kids. So could he be using like his disposable phones? What do they call them? There's a name for those phone burner phones. And, um, and if he is doing that, from what I understand, that's illegal. And, uh, will the prosecutors find out? So if he's, if he's running things from behind the scenes, giving advice to these, uh, kids, um, will the prosecutors find out about it? And if they find out about it, um, will that be what causes him to flip? I mean, something has got to give somewhere. So there's got to be some point where whatever he's saying is actually um, backfiring on him. I mean, he's, he's, he's got to feel like he's been so smart for all these years, carrying on all this fraud. And why is he willing to take it all for Trump? I don't get it. So the questions I think we're going to do is, is he running things from behind the scenes? And then will uh, the prosecutors find out? So let's go with that. We'll do a, a six cards right now. This is one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. Is he running things from behind the scenes? I think maybe that might be. He thought he could outsmart everybody and keep things going. Man, the loyalty these people have for a few million dollars. Okay, the signifier card for that then is going to be, huh, the Knight of Cups. Now, it's interesting. So the Knight is the compassionate guy who's going to go to war for the, um, the King and the Queen. You know, you've got the Page, the Knight, the Queen, and the King. So does he feel this uh, emotional, I don't know, compassion for the company that, hey, I'll resign, but, you know, I'll be here. Just ask me what you need to know. And if that's the case, this Knight is even, like, balancing on a, uh, a tight wire. So the knight is a signifier for that. Then the challenge to the the knight, and I think that is who he is right now. Now Alan has to be this knight of cups. Is oh look at that. So this is the nine of swords. Let me count them: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, there's a nine right there. So the nine of swords are nightmares. So if, if he's being this compassionate knight for the um, for the trumps, and he's challenged by the nightmares that it's going to cause. Now, the base of this reading, then, is the Empress. So look at that. Of course it is. It's the all the wealth, all the money, all the um, uh, all the goods, all the bounty that this whole thing has provided him for so long. So that's the base of the reading. And then the past uh, of this is strength. So he's shown that he has, has been a strong uh, soldier for the company, and he's going to toe the line. So that's where he's coming from. This makes sense so far. And then up in the sky of this reading... Ooh, it's a broken heart. So it looks like that's the best he can hope for is for it to swallow all these truths, all this justice, and it's going to pierce him right through the heart. Man, that is sad indeed. And then the likely outcome of the first part of this is going to be the chariot. Wow, so things are going to move on at a fast clip. These cards are not wasting any time in getting to the point today. And then the second part of that I want to ask is, will the prosecutors find out? I don't think we need the cards or a psychic. To, to answer that, but you know, let's see what the cards do tell us. So the self of this uh, of, of this situation right now, the self of this asking, will the prosecutors uh, find out about uh, him helping behind the scenes? And uh, wheel of fortune. So it's just a matter of time. The wheel of fortune turns constantly. It's always moving around, and it's going to come to uh, a full circle, and uh, everything's going to be revealed uh, as it does that. So that's the self, and the environment that that wheel is in then is going to be what. 
It's going to be the King of Wands. And the King of Wands is, the Wands are action, motion, power, fire, planning, getting things done. The King of Wands, I've got to say, this is the prosecution. And so this Wheel of Fortune is turning around for the prosecution, who are, in fact, the King of Wands. And then the hopes and the fears for all of that is going to be what? Oh, look at this, the Ten of Wands. And this poor, sad, chained up uh, elephant is just trying to hold on to all these wands and manage this bundle. And you know that at some point he's got to put them down or they're going to fall. Look, his, his feet are even off the ground on at least two places right here. So the hopes and the fears, maybe the fears is that he can't balance all these companies, all these subsidiaries, uh, especially through some kind of burner phones or some uh, clandestine uh, manner in which he's talking to the kids and Trump. And then the likely outcome for everything is look at that. The five of wands, which is disharmony, uh, embattlement, um, everything is confused. And so this is probably uh, him and all the folks who are trying to run the company uh, in absentia. So like that word, huh? So that's what we've got for Alan Weiselberg and will the prosecutors find out? So I've got to say, it always makes sense. This, these cards don't lie. So the first thing we come up with as a signifier is a Weiselberg and the Knight of Cups on a tight wire, compassionate, feeling for his company. And uh, he must feel like it's his company, that he's really the one that's uh, kind of uh, co-built it along the way. And what's the challenge by? It's challenged by the uh, Nine of Swords, which is just nightmares, nightmares. Uh, the basis of the reading was the big fat empress that the company was for all those years, providing all that uh, tax-free bounty. And uh, it, in the past, we had strength. The strength that he's been trying to exhibit and keeping everything's on an even keel but the likely uh, up in the sky of that is of course a broken heart i mean swallowing all those truths and justices down and try to keep them hidden and uh, it's going to stab him right in the heart and the likely outcome for the whole thing is that things are going to move what they're going to come wrong with this chariot at a pretty fast clip then we asked for the prosecution will they find out that he's actually doing this behind the scenes and we get the wheel of fortune it's just a matter of time uh, and again, that's cycles coming to an end. And then we get the uh, King of Wands, who I think is a prosecution. They are in charge of this uh, planning, this motion, this power, this action, this fire. They're going to get what they want. And then uh, the hopes and the fears is that this this poor elephant cannot, even though he's chained up, where is it? He's chained up over here. He cannot keep all these uh, uh, subsidiaries balanced and in a bundle. And because why? Because eventually we're going to have all uh, of this confusion and disharmony. It's just going to come to a head. So... It's all coming out. Well, I'm Mark. This has been My Journey Through Tarot. I'll be doing it again tomorrow if you want to go, so stop on by. Ciao for now.